Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Imagine you're responsible for transporting materials from one location to another for a logistics company. And you know, accurately calculating the distance and time between the two points is crucial, but efficient for logistics management. And having this information ready can save a lot of time and manual effort. However, doing it manually seems like a daunting task, right? But don't worry, there's a solution for it. Recently, uh, one of my clients had um, had a problem similar to this. They were a logistics cargo company and they wanted to uh, calculate the distance between their two locations and they wanted to calculate the distance and the time automatically instead of going to Google Maps, searching for the location and then entering it back into your Google Sheet. So it, it's, it, it's, it's kind of a manual task and it's, it's too much work to do. So they came to me and then I, I just went through the Google Maps app and some Google Apps script and now we can automatically calculate the distance between the start and end location. Additionally, we can cal uh, calculate the time between these two locations that it will take to cover. You can even use this for travel planning. If you're going on a trip with your friends or going on a trip with family, you can use this code even there to calculate the distance between different places. So why don't we just go and get started? So I'll just open up my app script editor. It's already open up here. So just go to extensions, click on app script to just refresh. Let's turn off the dark mode here. And here I'll just go here and I'll create a new function called, uh, let's just call it as get distance. And I'll open up the braces. And the first thing you want to do is uh, we'll get the Google sheet. So I'll start with where SS equal to spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet after this we'll get this uh, we'll get the particular sheet that we have so i'll do variable sheet i'll do ss dot get sheet by name and inside this get sheet by name i'll just pass this one you can keep any name that you want and if you want to work with the google sheet the link will be in the description you can check that out after this i'll be getting the number of rows that are there here so i'm going to do something like sheet dot get data range and after this data range, I'm going to get, get the number of rows by doing num rows. So next we're going to be getting the data. So I'm going to do where data and I'm going to do sheet dot get range. And inside this range, I'm going to be passing this a to b. That's going to be there. It's going to be taking all of them. So I'll just do a to b. And after this, I'm going to be doing something like this, where I'm going to be adding the number of rows. So this means that uh, it doesn't matter how, how many ever rows of data you have, it will be constantly going to the next one. And after the num dot rows, we just do a get values. Here. So all our data is going to be stored inside this. And um, next what we're going to be doing is we'll be opening a for loop that will iterate through all of these ones. So I'll just do for i is equal to zero. Then we have i is less than the number of rows or we'll do something called data dot length. And after this, we'll just do an I plus plus. I'll open up the for loop here. And inside the for loop, we want first the start location. So we'll do variable start. And I will do something like data. And I will add an I here. And we'll do a zero here. And this is the start location. Next, we'll be doing it for uh, the end location. That's going to be data. It's going to be I. And it's going to be one. So it's, it's, this is, so this is the first column, this is the second column. So we start from zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's how it works. And, uh, we'll be getting the status column. So the status column is something like data I, and it's going to be zero, one, two, three, four. So it's going to be four. We're adding four here. So what does the status column mean? This status column is going to be used, uh, to mark it as done. So once I calculate this to like the distance and time between the start and the end location, I'll be adding the status as done there. So the code doesn't go through the same locations again and again. So once it sees that the status column is done, it won't calculate the distance and time for that. But if you wanted to calculate, all you do is remove that done thing and, and it will automatically read it. So next, what we're going to be doing is we'll be adding an if loop, if start and and just exists they are there okay and we're going to be doing the status is uh not equal to not equal to let's just say done we'll do something like that and uh, we'll open up the loop here and inside this we'll be calculating our distance and time so we're starting out by doing variable directions 
inside this and here i'll be doing maps where we'll be using the maps and we'll be doing direction file we'll just do something new direction finder here and inside this the first thing is going to be setting the origin of it so i'll just say set origin the origin is going to be start of okay, not state is start after this we have to set a uh, we'll be setting a destination here so the destination is going to be the end one and after this we'll be doing something very very cool that's going to be the set the mode so inside the mode you can see uh, we, we can do something like this where we have a set mode and you have a mode for walking or you can cycle or you can drive and something like that so we'll just do maps dot direction finder dot mode and inside this we'll do dot you can see we have bicycling oh I mean cycling we have driving we have transit we're walking but uh, since it's a logistic company i'm going to be guessing the company is going to be driving there so i'm going to be clicking on driving here so we'll just arrange this up to make it look more clean and just do this here you can see the mode of this is done and in the end we'll be going ahead and just doing the get the directions for this and we are done so our main part which is getting the directions is ready and good to go so now we'll go ahead and get the distance and time between them so we'll be creating a new variable here called distance inside which we'll be doing uh, directions dot routes then we dot we'll be doing legs and after this we'll be doing the directions dot text or not the directions we'll be getting the distance right so we'll distance dot text so here we have it we have got the distance and after this we'll be getting the time so we'll do var time directions dot routes dot legs dot uh, duration dot text and we are done okay now that we have the distance and the time it's time to go ahead and put this data back into the sheet so we'll do something like this we'll do sheet dot get range set this we'll be doing i plus two right and we'll be adding this three here and then we'll be doing set value and inside this we'll be adding the distance so i plus two is just going to be the iteration through which it is there and third is going to be this column right so we'll be setting that there we'll go down here we'll do the same we'll do sheet dot get range this is going to be i plus 2 but this is going to be for the fourth column where we'll be setting the duration or the time that it has taken there and in the end we'll be doing sheet dot get range again we'll be doing i plus 2 and we'll be adding a 5 that and we're going to be doing set value and inside this we'll be adding our status that says done and our code is ready and good to go so you clear this out here I'm going to go ahead and save this project. I'm going to name this as um, get directions Google app script. Click on save. We'll select the get distance function and let's just go ahead and click on run here. So you'll have to accept some permissions once. So it will tell me to sign in into the account and it will tell me that it is in verified. It's unsafe. So just go to just go and click on go to directions telling me it will see this and do that. Just go ahead and click on allow. Here you can see the execution says it started and it's completed and if we go back to our Google Sheet we can see the distance has been pasted, the time has been pasted and the status has been successfully pasted into the Google Sheet. So this tells us that our code has successfully worked and uh, we can get, we can even check if you want to cross check you can check it out. Um, I'll be leaving the code link and the Google Sheet link in the description if you want to work with it. There is a blog version of this video I'll be leaving that also link in the description you can check that out. In the next video, we will be converting this into a web app where I can enter my start and end location and it will in return, it will give me a distance and time. So in, so in the next video, we'll be taking a look at that. If you like this video, then don't forget to like, share and for more content, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.